Given how loved Oxygen OS was and given how bummed out people were when they learned Oxygen OS will now just be a skin on top of Color OS, Color OS 12 is suddenly more relevant to a much larger demographic of people. In today's video, let's take a look at all the changes the latest version of Color OS brings to the table. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. ColorOS 12 is built on top of Android 12, so naturally there are going to be a lot of Android 12 features that are grandfathered in. With that disclaimer, let's start with the first feature that caught our eye. Very similar to One UI, Oppo has thrown in a wallpaper based theming option. Here when you select a wallpaper based on the dominant color, the UI elements change to match. However, I feel that this is a much more intuitive implementation than the one we have on One UI. All the colors from the wallpaper, they are mapped out and you can move these things around to get your preferred combination. Pulling down the notification shade, the quick setting seems to have gotten a visual overhaul. The icons are a tad bit bigger. Quickly checking those icons, we find a couple of new options like the camera axis and microphone axis. These are pretty self-explanatory. They let you disable permissions, whatever the reason might be, with just one quick tap. I feel this is one of the best and easiest implementations of privacy out there. Good job, Oppo. Let's quickly jump into settings. Instantly, the settings page is better streamlined. Now, you don't have all the UI specific features cluttering up the settings menu. Instead, all the important Android features are readily accessible and the special features are grouped under one menu option called special features. Makes sense, right? Now, while on the topic, we see that the settings menu itself is quite colorful with each item taking on a different color. Guys, you know, color OS, color. OS and all that. Now, if you jump into personalization, you get the option to tweak those colors, uh, just like with the wallpaper theming that we already discussed. I love the attention to detail here. Another place Oppo seems to have done really well is with the dark mode. Now, dark mode is something that works exceptionally well on devices with AMOLED panels. Now, that's largely because the dark part of the screen isn't being lit, so there's a there's infinite contrast, everything looks really good. But LCD screens, they power all the pixels when the display is turned on. So sometimes, you know, the one size fit, fits all uh, dark mode implementation isn't, it isn't great with LCD displays. Oppo here to, co to combat that has three configurations for dark mode. First, that's the enhanced dark mode that works well for AMOLED panels, giving you that pitch black background in the black parts of the screen. That's the usual implementation. Now, if you're gonna be you know, using one of the many Oppo phones with uh, AMOLED. The medium and gentle modes are aimed more at LCD displays and they have a grayish background that's supposed to have a more natural look there. So overall, I personally like the enhanced black uh, dark mode, but options are always great, right? Now, Oppo and other Chinese brands have a fascination with Apple. So they do from time to time adopt certain UI features and design choices. And now staying true to that, we have Omojis. This is their version of Memojis, the weird name aside. It does appear to work very well in the promo videos, despite the fact that unlike Apple, it's not done with IR mapping, but rather with just the selfie camera and it seems fun to use. I say seems because the full-fledged uh, Omoji app is yet to arrive uh, with the latest beta. The launch is uh, slated for December this year. Now, one of the fun applications of Omojis is in the lock screen. You could go nuts and have an animated Omoji show up and further customize your device. Another new addition to lock screen customization is portrait silhouette always on display. If you remember, this was an Oxygen OS feature that as the name suggests, lets you create a pencil sketch of the subject in the portrait shot and add it to your always on display. The fact that Oxygen OS features are being integrated into Color OS gives us a lot of hope for future releases as well. Now, Color OS always has had, uh, almost always has had a sidebar. I've never been a fan of it since, you know, fan of sidebars in general, but that was because most of the times when you look at these sidebars, the potential was limited. It was mostly about pinning frequently used apps and that kind of felt redundant to me. Oppo, here they've added a few nice features, quality, quality of life improvements that are frankly cool. For example, uh, their screen translate. This makes use of uh, Google Lens and reads everything on the page, translates it to a language of your choice. I can see this being very handy when, uh, let's say I'm looking up uh, specs on a China only phone or something like that. I mean, I would love to see a uh, real time voice translation for uh, Chinese launches, but hey, that's still just on the current gen pixels with stock Android and the fancy tensor chips. 
But hey, gift horse and all that, I love uh, what Oppo's done here. Now there is supposed to be support for background play, similar to what YouTube offers with premium. Uh, we weren't able to get this to work on our Reno 6 Pro just yet. So I'm assuming it will come later down the lane. Although multitasking has seen improvements with Android 12 as is, Oppo has brought back the floating window option, you know, from its older versions. This allows you to make an app into a floating window by swiping up and you have the option right there to go floating window. Like with most of these implementations, this does not support all the apps, you know, but it is still a nice feature to have when it is supported. Next up, with Android 12, we get features like chat bubbles. Oppo does one better and lets you add a widget that takes you to a preset conversation. And all the fun security features you have with Android 12, like the indicator that tells you if your mic or camera is being used by an app, and the ability to give certain nosy apps, <coughs> Facebook, uh, an approx location instead of a precise location are all present and accounted for here. Now, some of these features can be accessed through the privacy dashboard that gives you a snapshot of privacy features and security reports, like how many apps have used access to your location, camera, and mic. Here is where you can extend or rescind uh, security permissions. This is another way to either give exact or approx locations on a per app basis. Now another app that has gotten a facelift is the phone manager. This is usually present on most devices that come out of China and come with features like, uh, you know, clearing unwanted apps from memory and binning junk files that are of no use to name a few. Uh, the user interface though, at least for what it's worth, it's a lot cleaner with Color OS 12. And with that, we get to the end of this video. These are the major highlights, the major new features that uh, Color OS or rather Oppo's brought to brought to the table with Color OS. So what do you guys think? Do you feel, did you expect anything else? Do you feel there's something uh, Oppo's missed out on? Or are you excited for this update? Or better yet, are you, are you excited to see this on your next OnePlus phone? Do let me know in the comments below. Uh, so that's pretty much it. If you did find this video interesting, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for your time. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.